Tonight, the Israeli military surrounds Gaza City, face-to-face -face battles. The strike near a hospital in Gaza and the death toll tonight. Secretary of State Antony Blinken back in Israel asking for a humanitarian pause. In the U.S. tonight, the scare at one of the largest nuclear power plants in the country. The hunt for the driver right now. And the fire on board a flight at JFK. First tonight, Israel's missile strike raining down on Gaza. Israeli fighters taking on Hamas inside Gaza City. The strike near Gaza City's biggest hospital. Israel tonight saying it was targeting an ambulance being used by Hamas to transfer weapons and fighters. And that push by Secretary of State Blinken today for a humanitarian pause. What Prime Minister Netanyahu said about that. Matt Rivers in Israel tonight. Here in the U.S. amid warnings from the FBI about the rising threat from extremists with this war, some Jewish Americans across the country are now arming themselves. From California to Texas to Florida, what gun shops are now seeing, and the images tonight of the firearms training. Victor Akendo reporting. The scare at one of the largest nuclear energy plants here in the U.S., the alarming crash right through the security gates. They say the driver tried to hit several security guards. Pierre Thomas on the search right now. The scare aboard a JetBlue flight from New York City to Florida. The fire on board. Flight attendants using water bottles to put it out. President Biden paying tribute late today to the victims of the horrific mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. Former President Trump now preparing to take the stand in the civil fraud trial against him. And tonight, Ivanka Trump at her deposition, what she claims. The nurse accused of trying to kill several of her patients, 17 of them died. The weather whiplash heading into the weekend, the major change coming, and the storms in the Northwest. Also tonight, the earthquake in California. We remember a famous astronaut here. And a note about what's coming up tonight. Baby Holly found 40 years later. The exclusive interview right here on ABC. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night. We do begin tonight with the Israeli military surrounding Gaza City, the face-to-face -face combat with Hamas militants, and the airstrike near one of the largest hospitals in Gaza. Israel tonight says they were targeting Hamas, that Hamas was using an ambulance to carry weapons and fighters. Several civilians were killed. Tonight, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken back in Israel saying Israel has the right to defend itself, but pushing for humanitarian pauses to get aid into Gaza and to help to get the hostages out. Prime Minister Netanyahu, at least publicly, did not appear interested in any pause. Tonight, Israel not letting up on its intense bombing campaign. Massive explosions near that large hospital in Gaza. Multiple civilian deaths reported tonight. Israeli fighters battling Hamas militants inside Gaza City now. We have learned now 79 American citizens have gotten out of Gaza since the gate was opened yesterday and today. They're among the hundreds escaping Gaza through the Rafah crossing into Egypt. Hundreds of Americans remain. And of course, the hostages, more than 200 of them still being held by Hamas, Americans among them. ABC's Matt Rivers leading us off tonight from Tel Aviv. Tonight, as Israeli forces encircle Gaza City, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken meeting with Israeli leaders today to discuss a humanitarian pause in the fighting. Blinken raising concerns about Gazans caught in the crossfire as more aid is desperately needed. We need to do more to protect Palestinian civilians. We've been clear that as Israel conducts this campaign to defeat Hamas, how it does so matters. But Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu later seeming to rebuff Blinken, ruling out a humanitarian pause unless hostages held by Hamas are released. Blinken did reaffirm Israel's right to defend itself, saying he was shown video of the October 7th attack, also seen by ABC News, but not made public. In it, Hamas terrorists are seen tossing a grenade into a shelter with a father and his two boys inside then shooting the wounded man as he staggered out. Blinken visibly upset, describing what he saw. And then the boys come out, and they run into, into their house. And the camera in the house is filming everything. And they're crying. Where's daddy? One says. The other says, they killed daddy. Where's my mommy? And then the terrorist comes in, and casually opens the refrigerator and starts to eat from it. That's what we're dealing with. 
Inside Gaza, the IDF releasing video of what it says are its troops uncovering the entrance to a Hamas tunnel following a massive bombardment of the site from the air. Hamas releasing its own unverified video showing fighters emerging from its tunnel complex to attack Israeli ground forces. Large explosions also rocked the area near Gaza City's biggest hospital today, as Israel said it was targeting an ambulance being used by Hamas to transfer weapons and fighters. The Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry said at least 13 people were killed and 26 wounded in the strike near Al-Shifa Hospital. And at the southern Rafah border crossings, U.S. officials say 79 Americans crossed into Egypt, though hundreds more remain trapped. And as the fighting rages, there are growing fears about the 240 hostages held by Hamas, among them several U.S. citizens. Yarden Gonin's little sister Romi was taken hostage by Hamas during that music festival on October 7th. Today, she joined a rally outside the hotel where Secretary Blinken met with Israeli officials. A clear message on her mind, speaking to ABC's Ian Panel. You must bring them home now, not tomorrow, not today even, now. So let's bring in Matt Rivers live from Tel Aviv tonight. And Matt, we know Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, it seemed at least publicly, rejecting any calls for a humanitarian pause, uh, making it conditional on hostages being released. Tonight on Israel's northern border, we also know there's been another major development involving the militant group Hezbollah and their leader. Yeah, David, for the first time since this conflict began, we heard from Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah. And while he did say that all options remain, quote, on the table, he stopped short of calling for a second front to be opened in this war at the Lebanese border. And that's significant given the very real risks that we still face of this war turning into a wider regional conflict. David? All right, Matt Rivers leading us off from Tel Aviv tonight. Matt, thank you. And as this war intensifies here in the U.S. amid those new warnings this week from the FBI about the rising threat from extremists, tonight many Jewish Americans are now arming themselves. From California to Texas to Florida, what gun shops are now seeing. And the images tonight of the firearms training. Here's ABC's Victor Akendo. With the war raging in Israel and the FBI warning of attacks against Muslims and Jews in the U.S., tonight many Jewish Americans are taking steps to protect themselves, buying guns for the first time. I think right now it's just that people can't feel safe in their day-to-day -day life and they also feel like they have to be looking over their shoulder. Gun shops from Florida to California to Texas are seeing a surge in sales to Jewish customers. The people are coming in and saying that they are scared for their lives. Because of their religion, they're expecting to be attacked. In Hollywood, Florida, Andy Tenenhouse joined a group of Jewish women for an introductory firearms course. We need to make sure that our communities are well prepared. And God forbid if anything should happen, we know how to handle a situation. The ADL has seen a 400% spike in anti-Semitic incidents since the Hamas terror attack. In Los Angeles, where this week anti-Semitic messages were scrawled on a synagogue in the iconic Jewish deli Cantors, Rabbi Yossi Eilfort is giving firearms training to members of LA's Jewish community. The nonprofit Maganam says they're seeing an unprecedented surge in demand for classes. Hold on to the gun. Here in Florida, many coming to the Pembroke gun range, buying their first weapon, like Michael Farihi. Did you ever think you'd own a gun, be in this position? I definitely never thought I'd have to carry one on me at all times. And the thought that I might have to do that now or, you know, have one when I go to certain events is, is definitely a sad reality. And this week, the director of the FBI said that while Jews represent about 2% of the U.S. population, they were the targets of about 60% of the threats nationwide. David. That's a stunning number. Victor Akendo tonight. Victor, thank you. We turn now to the other news this Friday night and to the search underway right now after a scare at one of the largest nuclear energy plants here in the U.S. The alarming crash. The driver going through the security gates. Authorities say the driver tried to hit several security guards. Here's our chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, tonight. Tonight, authorities in South Carolina say 66-year-old Doyle Wayne Wisenhunt wanted in connection with a breach of one of the largest nuclear power plants in the country, is in custody. Mr. Wisenhunt is 5'7", weighs 185 pounds, has green eyes and gray hair. The call from Oconee Nuclear Station just north of Clemson coming around 8.05 p.m. Thursday night for a white male driving a silver 2002 Toyota Camry that drove through the exit side of the gate. 
After security activated a pop-up barricade, authorities say the suspect took off and drove through a fence after attempting to hit the security officers. 15 minutes ago, the vehicle that we were looking for uh, was located in Pickens County. The incident comes amid heightened concern that foreign or domestic violent extremists could target power grids. Last December, two substations in North Carolina were damaged by gunfire, knocking out power to 45,000 people for days. Winston Hunt is wanted in Arkansas on drug and weapons charges. No word yet on any charges in this incident. David? Pierre Thomas with late reporting tonight. Pierre, thank you. Tonight, the FAA is now investigating a scare on board a jet blue flight at JFK set to fly from New York to Florida. The plane still at the gate when a fire broke out. Flight attendants using bottles of water to put it out. ABC's Gio Benitez covers aviation. Tonight, what caused this chaotic scene aboard a jet blue plane? Flight attendants using water bottles to put out a fire. Listen. I still see smoke. I still see smoke. The plane was still at the gate at New York's JFK Airport, waiting to take off for Fort Lauderdale when passenger Jimmy Levy's portable charger apparently caught fire. I just heard a big explosion and I opened my eyes and a big ball of fire is coming right towards my face and I pushed it down and it was my backpack on fire. What the hell did you say? I stomped on it, I got it on the ground and, and then all the flight attendants just started coming and pouring water Tonight, JetBlue telling ABC News in a statement, our crew immediately responded and addressed the situation, and there were no requests for medical assistance. And David, tonight, both JetBlue and the FAA say they're investigating this case. And a reminder here, if you're on a plane and your device is overheating, make sure you tell the flight crew right away. David. Gio Benitez tonight. Gio, thank you. We turn now to January 6th, and tonight, a former Trump appointee at the State Department has now been sentenced to nearly six years in prison for his role in the attack on the Capitol. Federico Klein was convicted on several felony counts, including assaulting law enforcement. Prosecutors also say he had security clearance and access to sensitive information at the time. The judge, who is also a Trump appointee, called Klein's actions, quote, shocking and egregious. Meantime, former President Trump is now preparing to take the stand in the civil fraud trial against him. And tonight here, Ivanka Trump and her deposition, what she claims... Here's Aaron Katursky. Tonight, former President Trump preparing to take the stand in the trial that could crater his family business. And now his eldest daughter, Ivanka, is getting ready to testify, too. Today, ABC News obtaining excerpts of her deposition. Do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, to help you God? I do. Ivanka Trump is not a defendant in the case, and she didn't want to testify, arguing she would suffer undue hardship by having to travel from her home in Florida in the middle of a school week. Courts rejected that, and today she dropped her appeal. Like her brothers, Eric and Don Jr., Ivanka Trump claims to know little about the financial statements a judge determined fraudulently inflated the value of the family's real estate to secure favorable insurance rates and bank loans. A statement of financial condition would list all of the assets and all the liabilities, otherwise it wouldn't accurately portray the financial condition of the entities, right? I've, uh, I've, I've never pre pre I object prepared. To the question. Yeah, I've never prepared one, so I have look, no to idea. To your knowledge, you're a Wharton graduate. I object to the question. I've, uh, look, I have my own. I've never prepared one. I, I don't know. I've never made one. I'm not an accountant. And as you sit here today, you don't know whether it would include all assets and all liabilities? I don't know. She said she doesn't know anything about her father's personal financial statements either. No, I mean, not like specific to him. Okay, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. Not the company, specific to him where his assets and his liabilities are identified. Sure he has accountants who do all sorts of stuff, you know, have all sorts of stuff. But I, I no, sorry, right. I, I don't specifically know what was prepared on his behalf for him as a person separate and distinct from the organization. Her brothers have testified all they did was sign the documents their accountants prepared, insisting they didn't check what was actually in them. Today, Eric Trump testifying, I don't think I'd be so nitty gritty that I focused on details like this. This is just not what an executive at my level focuses on. Ivanka Trump is going to testify on Wednesday, but the trial's most anticipated witness, former President Trump, David, he goes first thing Monday morning. And you'll be there as well. Aaron Katursky tonight. Thank you, Aaron. We're going to move on now to a chilling investigation in Pennsylvania. The nurse accused of trying to kill several of her patients now facing new charges tonight. Prosecutors say at least 17 more patients under her care died. Here's Trevor Alt. 
Tonight, a former Western Pennsylvania nurse who police say already admitted to murdering two patients now charged in the deaths of more than a dozen new victims. Authorities say Heather Presti has confessed to trying to kill 19 patients at five different care facilities, 17 of them dying. The criminal complaint alleges Presti would administer lethal doses of insulin during the night shift when staffing was lowest and even take additional measures to try to kill the victims before they were rushed to the hospital. Authorities identifying a pattern over three years of Presti being investigated for abusive behavior that resulted in her then resigning or being terminated at each facility. The victims as old as 104 and as young as 43. The family is sick to know that their mother passed away in such a manner. 68-year-old Marianne Bauer was receiving care for MS. For nearly two years, her family believed she died of respiratory failure. They're now suing the facility. If proper steps and protocols would have been followed, uh, Nurse Presby would have uh, been caught, would have been turned into the authorities, and several people would still be alive today. And David Presby's attorney says she is cooperating with investigators, and tonight she remains in custody without bail. David, Trevor Ault on this story for us tonight. Trevor, thank you. Late today, President Biden paying tribute to the victims of the horrific mass shooting in Lewiston, Maine. 18 people shot and killed at a bowling alley and at that restaurant, a bar and grill. The victims between the ages of 14 and 76, a father and his teenage son among them. The president and first lady made an unexpected stop to Schmengi's Bar and Grill, leaving flowers at a memorial there to the victims. President Biden tonight once again urging common sense reform. When we come back here tonight, the earthquake in California where they felt this and the weather whiplash this weekend, what's now coming? And we also remember a famous astronaut tonight and what he did in a moment of crisis. Tonight, there's been a small earthquake felt in Southern California. Officials say a magnitude four quake centered about 12 miles northeast of Ventura. Residents in the area reported feeling the quake. No major damage or injuries reported. Changes in the air of the weather whiplash this weekend after the first widespread freeze of the season from the south all the way up to the northeast. A major warm-up now on the way for the weekend. Temperatures reaching the 60s and 70s in several major cities, including New York City. Storms, meanwhile, in the northwest, an atmospheric river bringing heavy rain and mountain snow to the Pacific Northwest right through the weekend. When we come back here tonight, remembering a veteran astronaut who helped save the crew of Apollo 13. And a note here about what's coming up tonight on ABC. Baby Holly found 40 years later the exclusive interview. Tonight, a passing to note, former astronaut Ken Mattingly, who orbited the moon aboard Apollo 16, has died. Mattingly was supposed to be on Apollo 13, scrubbed because of health concerns at the last minute. He was instrumental in bringing the crew home. Mattingly was 87. When we come back here tonight, Baby Holly found, 40 years later, the exclusive interview coming up. A final note here about what's coming up right here tonight on ABC. It's a story that made national headlines. Baby Holly found 40 years later. It started with a baby given away at the back door of a church by women in white robes. And then a separate mystery, a couple found murdered in the woods. It would turn out to be a beautiful young couple, but it took 40 years to identify them. And then the question, what happened to their baby, Baby Holly? Tonight on 2020 at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the first time, Baby Holly sits down with me for a network interview. What happened to her? What happened to her parents? And why it took 40 years to find her? I'll see you at 9 p.m. Eastern right here. Here's a first look. Good night. Tonight, the 2020 event. This is the story of a young family, their identities lost and then suddenly found again. A mystery that would defy belief. And it all started with this sudden arrival of a baby. I heard a knock at the back door. There were two ladies. They looked like they just walked right out of the Bible. I had never seen anybody like that in my whole life. They said, we need somebody to take care of a baby. She was a gift from God. It's like a mystery and a mystery and a mystery. This is just one of several stunning turns in this story. There would be another in the woods of Houston. So it was days before they actually discovered the two bodies and they were right here in the woods? Both bodies were um, bound. It was a young man and a young woman. They likely knew the people who killed him. The hunt for answers to what really happened in those woods would actually lead investigators across the country and to a second mystery. Yeah, I'm getting chills too, just talking about What happened to this baby? My brain just was on fire. How can a child be missing for 40 years and nobody know where she is? 
It sounds like a scene from a movie or something, right? All the pieces started to come together. Tonight, the woman behind the headline, Baby Holly, who made national news, sharing her journey for the first time from lost to found. Holly, it's great to finally meet you. Thank you, David. David Muir reporting, Baby Holly, found the exclusive 2020 event tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern on ABC.